Um, can you give a little bit of your your backstory? Sure. So I'll go I'll go I'll go way far back. Um, so I grew up, uh, I would say like extremely, extremely poor. Um, so when I was like, you know, five or six, we were living in a house and then I actually got taken from my, uh, my parents and, uh, got into a foster system. So I was in foster care for a couple of years. Um, from there, uh, I kind of like, uh, was like the leader of my, uh, two sisters, um, who actually were able to go with me, which I was super thankful for. So we went into foster care as well. But uh, from an early age, I kind of got that whole like uh, like step up. It's time to become a man kind of thing, and like that leadership role um, from like you know the time that I was like six to nine. Um, so from there, uh, um, we moved back with my mom. Eventually, uh, moved down to Kentucky. Didn't like that, and then I moved with my dad when I was fourteen. I was a uh, very rebellious kid in high school. Mm -hmm. I did not like school. I didn't like authority. I didn't like uh, just following along because everybody told me to. Um, I knew that I didn't want to go to college. Um, so, yeah, all the all the teachers told me, you know, even some of them knew my past. And so then uh, they also knew my father's past and stuff. And then the way that I was, they were like, OK, you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life. Like, that's just what you are, because, you know, I was like not respecting authority and stuff. But uh, anyway, flew through high school because I got kicked out twice. Um, like half my year throughout the whole year. So I got kicked out twice and uh, I went, ended up going to alternative school, um, but I was like halfway smart. So I just flew through all the tests and then hurried up, graduated early. So I graduated at 17. And then from there went on to do uh, mostly physical labor. I did uh, landscaping for a while. I worked like three jobs. I was working uh, at the street department. I worked the YMCA, like doing aftercare with kids. Um, and then I did landscaping and then I really started doing only landscaping, working like, you know, 60 hours a week. Then I decided I was like, oh, you know what? I want to own my own business. So decided to do landscaping after my landscaping job. So I'd work, you know, 12 hours in a day and then I'd work until nighttime. Um, but the bad thing about landscaping in Indiana, which is where I'm at in Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, it's seasonal. So like, you know, you got snow plowing, which is great. But like, you know, it's whenever it snows. So basically you have no job. So every single winter I had to find a job and that was really the difficult thing for me. So I was like, I worked in a factory, I was a mechanic. Um, I just did whatever I could to survive. I went to Texas one time and like painted these little things on a gas station. Um, but uh, eventually I just applied um, on the last time. So that happened for like two or three years. And then on the last one, I was like, you know what? Like I need to uh, like really find a job and I haven't found a job in probably like three weeks and I was running out of money. So I applied for a trailer factory job that I actually ended up getting. And then I also applied for a car sales job. And uh, so they approved me for the trailer factory. And then literally like the day that I was about to tell them like a yes or a no, that was when the uh, car sales position, they said, hey, come in, we want to interview you. And I was like, man, I don't know. I can make, you know, $1,000 a week doing this uh, physical labor, which I know I'd be good at. Like I'd kill it. And then I heard that you could make a uh, rate so you can work less hours, work really hard, get done early and stuff. But the guy was like, well, what would you rather do the rest of your life? I was like, you know what? I think I would actually rather be sales. So at that time, I was, uh, I believe I was 20 years old um, and I uh, went to car sales. And then that was really where uh, things started taking off for me. So it was 100% commission, started to listen to like self-help uh, books, all that stuff. And um, yeah, I just started developing myself as a salesperson and then started doing extremely well in it. Um, then went on to get salesperson of the year for four years in a row and then uh, really like found my calling. So uh, just maxed out on sales. And then, uh, yeah, then from there on out, then we, you know, Red Rich Dad, Poor Dad got into real estate and bam. There we go. All right. So right now you're crushing it on, uh, you're crushing it in real estate, but <clears throat> let's go back to the the part about high school. So I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm, I am a high school dropout. So I actually dropped out of high school in the like pretty much ninth grade. I kind of just gave up and I just realized that like school was not for me. But um, do you know what specifically about school did you hate? Was it like the, the people part of it? Was it the work? Like, was it the reading? Yeah. So I remember most of what it was, was... Uh the teachers in their like uh, the way that they thought that they knew everything, even though I could tell that they didn't and their expectations for me on what my life was going to be. And like 
like kind of demanding that I do certain things. And that just really bothered me uh, that like, they're like, I know what's best for your life. I'm going to tell you what successful is. And then there's always some hypocrisy with it. You know, they're like, hey, just so you know, you should uh, not chase money. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you don't go to college, then you're not going to get a job that you make a lot of money. And so I just noticed a lot of that stuff. And I was really just trying to, like, make sense of it all. But I really knew yeah. that I did not want to have somebody, like, telling me what to do all the time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I'm kind of the same way. I think it's called, like, a, I have, like, a deviant personality where if someone's like, hey, don't do this. My first thought is, like, well, why not? Why don't mm -hmm. you want me to do this? What if I do it? What happens? Will I get in trouble? Exactly. Is that fair if I get in trouble? And then I'll just like start playing these hypothetical situations. And then, <clears throat> and I, I remember, I, I remember I was in kindergarten, kindergarten, first grade, something like super, super early. And um, the teacher was saying like, oh, if you don't go to college, you're going to end up working at McDonald's. And I was like, okay, like, that's not that bad. I was like, dude, make, you know, McDonald's, I could eat the food. I was like, if I get paid, I remember doing the math at the time. Like if I get paid $3 an hour, that's enough to buy me and my mom food. So I'll be okay. And then I remember when I got to high school, I just remember being in like math class and we were doing like the MX squared times seven equals Y. And I was just like, dude, I don't get like, I don't get why we're doing this. Like, I just didn't get it. And, and there was a lot of things that I was just like, I don't get why we're doing this. Like, I just don't understand the purpose of this. So yeah. I'm the type of personality that like, if I don't like something, or if I feel like I'm wasting my time, I'm out. I'm not going to try to blend in. I'm not going to just go along with the flow. So I remember like, I just started shutting down and I was just like, I'm not doing this. Like, I don't get it. I don't get why we're doing it. Even though I'm not, I'm not dumb at all. Like whenever I applied myself, I got straight A's. But if I just didn't enjoy it and I didn't get the purpose of it, I just stopped. And that's kind yeah. of why I dropped out of high school. And I, I actually yeah. got a job. I dropped out and got a job. I would say uh, I definitely agree with that. And I definitely think that I wish they would let you get a little bit more specialized and like actually choose what you want to do a little bit more. Because, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I learned. There's like, when am I going to actually use this? And then what, what uh, grade did you drop out? Like ninth. Okay. See, I, that would be like the perfect time that I think like from that point on, there was nothing <laughs> that was there. Like, seriously, yeah. I was like, man, like if I have the basic algebra, like I was thinking like eighth or ninth grade. From that point on, I didn't need any more information. Like all the other information that they gave me was more just like, all right, memorize this, do these certain things. And I was like, man, it was really pointless because like realistically, like I only use algebra now, like for like 90% of what we do, it's just algebra, dude. It's eighth grade algebra. Well, I took algebra yeah. in eighth grade. Even, dude, my son is uh, in the sixth grade and I was trying to help him. With, he's, he's in the fifth going into the sixth. And I was trying to help him with his homework the other night. He had like five, uh, five and seven eighths times five, you know, two over four. And I'm just like, dude, yep. oh man, I don't even know. And I can't tell him that because I don't want to tell him as a father, like, oh, this is, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> you don't even need this. So I'm just like trying to help him, me and my wife. But yeah, I think. You know, I don't want to sit here and complain about the school system, but I do think they need to, like, teach more specific stuff that's going to be more relevant. I think, like, in yeah. school, they teach you there's only one right answer, but in the real world, there's many right answers. And sometimes there's three right answers, and you have to pick which one, you know, you feel comfortable with. So there's so much that they could do to improve school, and I hope they fix it, but... Yeah. One last thing I want to say about the school system is uh, something that I've noticed that you do and that I definitely do is it's interesting that when we're in school and we're being told that we have to like read these certain books, books or learn this certain thing, um, we're like, no. But now, like 
we will learn everything and we go all in. Like I listened, I know you read a lot of books. I read a stupid amount of books. I never read a book in high school. Now I'm reading them like crazy. Yeah. And I think that that's yeah. another thing that people need to shift their mindset about is that once you graduate college does not mean that you're done learning. Learning should be a lifetime event and a lifetime thing where you're growing yourself all the time. It's not like you reach a certain point and now you're good. So that's something else that I think is a common misconception about school is that everybody thinks that once you get that degree, now now you don't have to do anything more. Now you've already achieved or you've already learned. Now it's time to apply when realistically what we yeah. do as entrepreneurs is learn, apply, learn, apply, learn, apply. And we go back and forth all the time. 100%.